It is a Tuesday, and usually we have Welcome to Career with Korean Onni. But instead of learning Korean language today, we're going to be talking about a very famous international musical known as Ida. It's drawn 730,000 viewers in 14 years since its premiere here back in 2005 in Korea. And it's known as a dream performance, apparently, for the musical actors. And with the final run coming up, the musical team from Ida is here in the studio. To join us, we have Keith Batten, International Associate Director, and Chun Nayong playing the role of Ida herself. Uh, good morning, guys. Thanks good for coming morning. in. It's great to be here. Uh, mm. Would you like to introduce yourselves to our listeners? Uh, anything you want to say yeah. about yourselves? I go first. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> um, so my name is Chun Nayong, Nayong Jun, and I am Korean. Mm -hmm. I'm born in the Netherlands, so I'm officially Dutch. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okie dokie. Okay, and I have. Uh, done musical theater over the world uh, in the Netherlands, in London, and now I'm based in Korea. Oh, fantastic. And I'm playing the lead part. Of Ida. <laughs> Ida herself. Fantastic. Yeah. And Keith, what about you? What's your background? Uh, well, I've been uh, associate director of Ida for... Uh, since uh, about 2000, for 20 years, actually. Wow. <laughs> since wow. it first tried out in Chicago before it opened on Broadway. Uh -huh. So I've worked on all of the productions of Aida around the, uh, around the world. Mm -hmm. And um, I was also associate director of Beauty and the Beast uh -huh. all around the world. And uh, I've worked on Les Mis. I've worked on about five of the biggest musicals of all time so wow. wow so based mainly in the states but you have a role wherever it tours abroad uh right i i'm uh, based in new york uh -huh. and um whenever there's a new production i go out and cast the show in the country that it's being done in uh -huh. in that language and then um i go there for rehearsals for the couple of months to set the show up fantastic so you've been participating in the aida runs here in korea since 2005 apart from the 2010 run right uh well i participated in 2010 we've done it here five times uh, -huh. uh the second time in 2010 i came here to cast it okay uh But when it came time to actually direct it, I was also associate director of Spider-Man on Broadway. Oh, wow. Busy. And, <laughs> yeah. So we went into rehearsals for that at the same time as this. So I had to um, coach our production stage manager uh, how to direct it here. Oh, I see. Okay. So A Korean? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. And you left it in their capable hands. And I'm sure everything well, went okay. <laughs> yes, every, everything well. We've, we've, we've been back three times since. So, uh -huh. <laughs> so is this uh, meant to be the final run of Aida in Korea? Uh, in the world. In the world. Yes. This is the end in But Korea. But are we allowed to say this? <laughs> no, I'm not sure. I, I've learned in this business anything can happen. Never say never. Yeah. Right, that's right. That's right. So uh, this is uh, supposed to be the final production of it in Korea. Uh -huh. uh, but it's been incredible. No place else in the world has done it five times like they have here. So Really? Uh, we'll, see, we'll see, though. You never know. Why, why do you think it's been particularly popular here, then, in Korea? I often see, over the years, those posters of Aida on the side of the streets, and I've always wondered, why is it back again and again and again? <laughs> I think Korean audiences really connect to this musical more than... Uh, a lot of other audiences around the world. I think there's a, a deeper connection to it, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, you would have to ask somebody who's Korean about. But I feel each time we rehearse it, there's a much stronger sort of spiritual connection to the mm. show here oh, wow. than there was mm. when it was originally done on Broadway. Oh, that's wow. fantastic. I didn't know that it had that particular affinity with Korea. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yes. But you know, Korean people have a word for it. Mm. We have Han, you know. I'm hearing that a lot these yeah. days. Uh, we're talking about 100 years since the independence movement yeah. with Japan and stuff. And yeah, then... and it goes even further back, I guess. Yeah. People say it's in our DNA. How would you describe Yeah, yeah, so Keith, Han is a word. Um, I don't think there is this word in any other country or language. No, it's yeah. hard to describe in yeah. English, right? <laughs> But it means a kind of suffering, a kind of um, un united suffering. Um, 
Yeah. You, like you've been wronged in a really yeah. big way. Yeah, exactly. And that kind of colonial time with Japan is a perfect example of it, mm-hmm. right? That emotion that built yeah. up then. And nothing like... individual, like, oh, you did this to me, but like <laughs> as 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 a group, as yeah. a community, to feel that suffering and to feel to yeah, to, to feel for each other. Yeah. Um and that goes really deep. And um that's something that was that's in Pansori as well, what I was just telling you about. I was telling him Other traditional music. Yeah, 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 yeah that pain is in the voices, pain. isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We've got lots of listeners on board watching on Yay. both YouTube and Naver V Live. Siska just asked a question from Indonesia saying, How many different countries has Aida been in before? Uh, let's see, there, there was the original Broadway production, then we uh, had a US tour. Uh, it was done in the Netherlands, Germany, <laughs> uh, a German tour, uh-huh. uh, Japan, and here. Uh, so I've I've directed. Uh, this will be the eleventh time I've put up a company. Wow! In uh, about six different countries, I guess. Oh, oh that's amazing! That run, mm. yeah. yeah. Um, and for for you knowing a question, the musical Aida is said to be very popular with the musical actors themselves. Although obviously audiences love it, so I heard that you came through competition of around one hundred and fifty to one. Hmm. How did you approach the audition to get this role that seems to be very coveted? Yeah, well, first of all, it's it's better not to know that it's 150 to one <laughs> okay. before you get into the audition. Just, just think there's a couple of people <laughs> auditioning. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, um, when you audition, you don't have the part yet. So sure. I always think there's nothing to lose. Uh-huh. So I just um, fall in love with the character and then I, um, I, I just throw myself into it. As part of research, do you watch the musical or see some clips of it or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, definitely. But I, I'd known the musical before. Uh-huh. Um, Keith just mentioned Aida went to the Netherlands. When was that? In 2001, maybe? Right. Uh-huh. Um, it was the first musical that I've ever seen oh, wow. in the Netherlands. Really? Yeah. Was that before you started your career as oh, a yeah, musical Oh, yeah, I was actor? very young. Oh. How old was I? Maybe <laughs> 11, 12, I don't know. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. So did that inspire you in a way? Absolutely, yeah. It was the first musical that I went to see with my parents. Uh-huh. And I was back in the balcony, the second balcony or something. Okay, quite far away. Yeah, quite far <laughs> away, but I was so overwhelmed. And I could really feel the energy and the music and the, and the power of the story wow. coming through. And um, I think that's when I fell in love with musicals. And then when I had the opportunity to sing the songs myself, uh-huh. I just think of it as an opportunity. When I audition for a part that I love, yeah. then I don't really think, oh, I must get it, or the anxiety doesn't doesn't really help. It's more like just a plus if you get it. Exactly. Not so much of a negative. Just to get to sing those songs is already such an honor. That, so, that's um, a brilliant way to think hmm. of it. Not just for musical acting, but any opportunity out there, like a job interview. Guys listening, <laughs> don't be nervous. It's just a bonus if you get it, right? <laughs> uh, we've got some photos as well taken hey. from the promotional... Uh, material here that we're going to show of you, Nayong. Yeah. This is you as the main character. <laughs> wow, you look completely different. Our producer's just trying to waz it over to our screen over here. We'll do that in a couple of minutes. Um, but Nayong, you also have a wonderful resume. You're the first Asian to appear in the musical Les Mis in the West End. Yeah. I'm going to say the home of musicals because I'm from London. Maybe yep. Keith will disagree with me <laughs> with Broadway. Uh, but yeah, what was that like? And then what made you come well, over to Korea? Okay, so um, we should go back to Miss Saigon in the Netherlands in oh. 2011. That that was the first leading part that I uh, that I played. Uh-huh. Uh, I played Kim in Miss Saigon. Um, that was the team from London. Cameron McIntosh came to the Netherlands to set up that show. Oh, wow. Yeah. I watched it in the West End. That's uh, a fantastic yeah. show. But you played the part in the Netherlands. Yes. <gasps> What, did they even have the helicopter on stage, yes. which I was amazed by? Yes. <laughs> wow. Okay. It was that version. It uh-huh. was that production. Um, that's when I um, um, met the London team from uh-huh. Cameron McIntosh. Uh, they invited me over to London to audition for the part of Eponine initially. Wow. <laughs> um, but then in the final audition for Eponine, 
they asked me if I could sing I Dreamed a Dream. Uh -huh. uh, I hadn't prepared I Dreamed a Dream, <laughs> but they said, okay, just go to the piano and sing it from music. Wow. <laughs> so I sang it with, with, with the music paper in my hand. Yeah. And then I got the part of Fantine on the West End. Well, that's that was amazing, amazing. For, yeah. for an Asian musical actor to get that role as well. <sighs> yeah, it was, um, it meant a lot for me, but uh -huh. it was also very hopeful just for, for, um, for the industry, I think, to see that... Um, a part can be played by anyone Absolutely. if you're right for the part. Uh, fantastic, yeah, because yeah. with Miss Saigon, obviously that's more predictable, but to do that yeah. in Les Mis exactly. is historical. Thank you. Did you yeah. get a lot of support from Korea? Because Korea usually embraces its successful like exports around mm, the world, right? Yeah, well, I didn't really have any connections in Korea then yet. I see. Yeah, weirdly, I was very, um, very Dutch. <laughs> uh -huh. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did come to Korea with my parents at to, to visit and travel, but uh -huh. I had never lived here. Uh -huh. um, I didn't have any Asian friends before I did Miss Saigon even. Oh, I was wow. the only Asian in school always. I see. Yeah. So completely non-Korean kind <laughs> of domestic upbringing in the Netherlands. Yep. Keith, for Niall, what made you, you did the casting, what made you choose her? Well, <laughs> I, when, when we do auditions, I don't really like to know too much about a performer before okay. they come in. I mean, I look at the resume sort of briefly, but I'm more interested in seeing what they bring into the room with them. Yeah. And uh, so I didn't know too much about Na Young's uh, history. Uh, I just wanted to see what she was like in person. And after seeing her, I, of course, was very interested because I could see she was wildly talented. And uh, that's when people started telling me, oh, well, you know, she's from the Netherlands. Uh -huh. And then but then I realized, oh, I had seen her <laughs> in I saw the um, the film version of uh, The King and I that ah. was shown all around the world. Did you see that? Yes, yes. And so I'd seen her in that. In the cinema. She was in The King and I from the West End. Oh, wow. With and Ken Watanabe and Kelly O'Hara for oh, the musical. Oh, in, in the movie version of it. Well, they, they it was they the stage it. version, but ah. they showed it in cinemas. Wow. And, and uh, so ah. I knew how incredible she was <laughs> from that. And uh, so, of course, once I saw her, I thought, oh, she's perfect for Aida here, yeah. too. And um, uh, then I started discovering more about her history and how she was internationally known. Mm -hmm. And I was saying to the producers that, you know, she's a, an incredible uh, asset to this company. You know, if <laughs> Koreans should celebrate mm. this idea that one of their own is international yes. and wow. in her experience and um, so she brings a lot to the role that I don't think somebody who's just lived here mm -hmm. would understand yeah it seems like a bit of a no-brainer I feel sorry to the other 149 actresses <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's fantastic now well done for getting it Thank we, you so much. we've got lots of questions about the story of Aida we'll talk about that in part two but for now we're going to have a little song break you've got a song request now are you into k-pop at all I love k-pop right now Brilliant! <laughs> that's amazing mm, yeah before I didn't really know a lot about k-pop uh -huh. but then I was in London playing The King and I, yeah. and people from London mm -hmm. in the cast were coming up to me and were like raving about BTS, and I had never heard about BTS oh, before. Oh, wow. They told you about that. Yeah, them. in London. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So then I started looking up BTS, and I just completely fell in love. Okay. Yeah. So what's your song request? It's BTS's rivals, perhaps, right? EXO. Mm -hmm. Are you a fan of them as well? Yeah, both. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not EXO, it's Dio. Dio from EXO, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's his new song, um, That's Okay, Quintana do Quintana. Um, and I love that song. I have actually covered it with my flatmate as oh well. wow <laughs> is there anywhere we can see that is yes it on, on youtube it's or on youtube um that's okay by dio and you can go to her channel anna paolo paula uh -huh. paula anna paula okay yeah. <laughs> and find it we're not yep. playing that version we're going to play no. dio's for now yes. <laughs> and then we'll be back in part two enjoy we're back for part two of our Tuesday special this week, speaking with uh, Chun Naeung playing the role of Aida in the same musical, and Keith Batten, the International Associate Director. 
and we got a couple of pairs of tickets to give away so if you're going to be in Korea or if you're a Korean listener as well please let us know if you'd like these the performance is taking place on the 19th of November at 8pm here in Seoul in the Itaewon area we'll give you some more information about that later on uh, is that the opening or when does it open? Uh, on the 16th. 16th. Yeah, okay. so we have a couple of previews before that. Mm -hmm. So about three days before that, we'll start performances. And then how long is the run? Until the end of February. Oh, okie dokie. All right, so you've yeah. got to be doing that how often? How many times a week is it? Mm, four times a week. Is yeah. that not hard on your throat and your vocal cords? Well, to be honest, <laughs> I used to do it eight times a week. Eight abroad. times a yeah. week? More than once a day? Yeah, wow. yes, yeah, twice, <laughs> twice uh, in a week, twice, a, uh, twice a day. Wow! Uh, yeah, did I say that right? <laughs> Two times, twice a day. Yeah, exactly. That's insane. It's uh, it's an exception here in Korea to be double casted. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, they usually have one person take a role one day and another person another day, or uh, that's here in Korea. Yeah. But um, in London or in the Netherlands, anywhere else in the world, um, you do all the shows. So eight what, why shows is a that week. specifically in Korea done like that? Do you think? Well, <laughs> it's kind of a unique situation, actually, to have a double cast, uh -huh. uh, two sets of principles. Yeah. Um, and I think it's uh, they seem to like comparing here. <laughs> okay, yeah, there is a lot of competition it's, it's, as well, yeah. Well, yeah, but, uh, you know, and then people come back to see different combinations of the principles do the yeah. show. Oh, that's interesting. Rather than it being the same group each time. I think it's an amazing thing because... Um, yeah, it, it, it will have a different color when you have different uh, peoples playing the characters. Yeah. And um, people come back to see it once or twice or yeah, maybe with three a different times. cast exactly. and stuff. Maybe that's good marketing on their part, <laughs> like to draw more people in. Uh, we're going to take a look at some of the promotional posters for Aida. These are the ones that I see on bus stops and on the lampposts everywhere. So to be honest, I don't know too much about this musical. So when I saw the poster, it looks like really confusing there's no like hints in there for hmm. what it's going to be about i feel what what is that showing us by the way wow. that's that it's two people it's a, a, a well the original concept was that it was a white man with a black woman uh -huh. uh, and you see both faces creating oh, one oh i see okay yes and um that was how it started in the us uh -huh. so uh, now it's not as uh, because it's really about slavery mm -hmm. and people being enslaved and in in the us it was more a racial thing uh -huh. but uh here it's it's a different idea i think so, but that was oh. the original idea for the logo oh i see okay we've also got a little promotional video clip that we're going to show our listeners then we can talk more about the plot as well i think it shows some of the musical performances in different places in the world our producer's just going to line that up for us uh, but i think it's ready now producer yep yeah, we're going to take a look at this first the grand finale promotional video is this part of the music from the show? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. That's our beautiful ensemble. The costumes are amazing. That's you. Mm -hmm. That's why the mayor is there. Wow, that music itself is really kind of spine tingling. Uh, like many musicals, it gets you really emotional, right? It plays yeah. with your emotions. Uh, I'm loving that. So the story you mentioned briefly there is based in slavery. So what's the main plot without any spoilers of course well it's really it's really a a, a love story a love triangle and uh -huh. it's about an egyptian captain in ancient times who captures a nubian uh slave and uh brings her back to egypt and he's uh engaged to be married to the egyptian princess but uh -huh. it turns out that the slave that he's brought back is also a princess in her own land hmm. but wow. he doesn't realize that so uh it's he falls in love with the slave even though he's betrothed to an egyptian and uh the slave works for the egyptian princess uh -huh. so there are hmm. two princesses <laughs> who become sort of friends, yeah. and yet nobody knows Aida's secret that she was a princess back home in Nubia. Oh, wow. Uh, so it's set in ancient times, but the music is very contemporary with Elton John, uh -huh. uh, and uh, the design is sort of um, 
Uh, it's based on ancient history, but it's also very contemporary. It's a, a mixture so that it's kind of timeless. Yeah, and it's won many awards. Uh, and like you said, it's been around for, what, 20 years? 20 years, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it uh, reminds me just a little bit, just because it was at Egypt base, of Joseph and his Technicolor Dreamcoat, which was one of my from my youth one of my favorite musicals that i managed to yeah, see yeah it's sort of it's, it's sort of related but it's it's much more uh it's got a lot more weight and a uh-huh. lot more depth than joseph yeah it's yeah. i think that's why people love the show so much it's very emotional but it's very spiritual and um the um the music is uh very emotional that's yeah. Elton John wrote a lot of that for yes. the musical he wrote way back everything. more than two decades ago. Yes, yes. Oh, and wow. so after he did The Lion King, uh-huh. uh, the Disney people came up with the idea, or I think he wanted to do it, actually, and it was the first stage musical that they did that wasn't based on one of the animated films. Yeah. Uh, so he wrote the score with Tim Rice doing the lyrics, and uh, that was the beginning of uh, this sort of international success yeah james carroll one of our listeners from the state says yeah that's what they heard that it was originally the disney folks wanting to work with elton john on another mm. project after the lion king yeah. a few of our viewers also after watching the video said it reminds them in some way of the lion king and maybe the musical background has something to do with uh, that. well yeah i guess because oh, yeah. elton john doing the music but the um i've always been drawn to musicals that are uh, more dramatic mm-hmm. rather than musical comedies. Sure. And uh, I worked on Les Mis for five years, mm-hmm. too, over in North America and yeah. Miss Saigon. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we're sort of connected, even though we yeah. didn't realize it before. Oh, yeah. It's uh, amazing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so and then Beauty and the Beast, doing Beauty and the Beast all around the world. What I loved about that was that even though it was based on a on a fairy tale, it was very deep and emotional for people. Mm-hmm. And so it was a natural progression to move on to Aida um, because of the connection with Tim Rice doing his work on Beauty and the Beast as well. And uh, yeah, so that was how it all began. Yeah, it's an amazing story. So Aida is also famous for those dynamic dances. Is there a, a sword dance that features in there as well? Not Weapons? Re- not a sword dance. <laughs> no, but I a, think it's a mix. Uh-huh. But, um, it's very contemporary. So Do you have to do a lot of dancing no. as well? No, no, no. It's just acting and singing yep. for you. Yeah. But combining that at the same time, it looks like a very difficult job. Like usually um, in movies, Mm. you're just doing the acting and Mm. then singers just do the singing. Musical actors, I think, have the hardest time having to combine both. Um, But it's also very natural, I think, because Uh when you're singing a song, you're basically telling a story. Mm -hmm. You are a character um, singing about your feelings and, and... you're singing to someone or to many people or to God or to yourself. Or <laughs> yeah. it's, it's actually a scene. Really? You can see it as a monologue. Yeah, it looks totally yeah. fine on stage. But I mean, <laughs> if someone did that in just everyday life, burst out into song while <laughs> speaking to you, you might blink twice. But uh, mm. yeah, I think musical actors, I don't know, for the average person like me just watching it you think mm. that they're super talented like they've got both sides nailed how how do you practice do you like do the acting practice separately or the singing practice separately or just put it all into one like you said mm. naturally perhaps i think vocal training is necessary uh-huh. um so before you go, go into the storytelling of a song it's good to warm up your voice yeah. and to know how this all works here <laughs> the vocal cords yeah, yeah the vocal cords and um um yeah, there are many techniques that you can use. I, I learned EVTS in school. Uh-huh. Uh, it's a singing technique system, actually, okay. to know very technically <laughs> how everything works and how you can change your voice okay. to this, wow. to this. or wow. Yeah, like everyone is basically uh, capable of singing. Yeah, um, you think so. I don't think our <laughs> listeners will agree. I've tried to sing on the show a few times and everyone's told me to be quiet <laughs> in a much ruder way yeah. than that, actually. Um, but yeah, uh, we're going to now be so lucky that in the studio, you're going to be kind enough to perform one of the tracks. <clears throat> we have to make it clear. It's 10.30 a.m. here in Korea, right? Morning yep. time is not so good for singers usually, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, yeah. so you're going to take a sip of water or yep. is it some kind of...
kind of special singing juice in there? Well, I've got my parents <laughs> visiting Korea. They're oh, wow. here now. I'm so happy. Yeah. So my mum made me a honey tea. Oh, Korean mums are the best. Like looking after their kids. <laughs> I always get a ginger tea when my mum's mm. on board. Uh, so what's the track that you're going to perform for us then? It's called Easy as Life. Easy and, as Life. And um, Aida has to make a decision. Uh-huh. Um, She's in love with Radames, the, the, the Egyptian general. Is uh-huh. that how you call it? Um, but he is her enemy. And, uh, well, not just her enemy. Sure. Her people's, her country's enemy. Yeah. And the both countries have been in war for many, many years. A lot of conflicting emotions Exactly. Here. Easy as and, life. Yep. Well, life is not easy. So let's take a listen to this, uh, Nayong. Uh, we're going to play the backing track. So if you're ready, we'll take it away. <sighs> let's let's give it a try. 지금 이 순간 신들은 도움을 간청하기 바라고 있겠지만 내 자신은 내 스스로 지키겠어 쓰러져 죽어도. 포기하지 않아 이 모든 것을 쉽게 끝내는 그 길은 그 일을 향한 내 사랑 포기하는 것이 모든 것을 쉽게 끝 나는 그 길은 사랑과 열정 없다고 믿는 것 뿐이야 쉬운 일 쉬운 일 이 모든 것을 쉽게 끝내는 그 길은 그를 만난 적 없다고 내 자신 속이는 거야 이 모든 것들을 쉽게 끝내는 그 길은 불타는 사랑 그냥 꺼버리면 돼 
was about, you're going to explode at the end there. I thought, is the radio you're going to hold back a little bit? And if your voice is like that in the morning, I cannot it's, imagine what it's going to be that, like in the that evening. That is one of the most difficult songs in the show. And for her wow. to do that at 10 in the morning is really extraordinary. So Unbelievable. I'm, Standing ovations all round. Our listeners went crazy as well. Um, Bree saying, can Thank we get you. more musical actors in here? Not all musical actors are like Niall, I feel. <laughs> We've had a couple in before. That was so powerful. Hartley saying, wow, my doggy lives. What a voice. Bree and Yana say they're crying. So you yep. got our listeners very emotional as well. Thank you. Even despite many of our listeners not speaking Korean, a lot of them are saying, without knowing the lyrics, it's just the power in the voice that has made them so emotional. Wow, that's fantastic, Now, Thank you so much for doing that this Thank morning. You. And uh, it's, it's dealing with a, a central theme in the show, too, which uh -huh. is choosing, having to choose between love and duty. You know, your, a love, a personal love or duty to your country. And that's the dilemma that she's going through through the song, yeah. uh, where she's having to uh, abandon her love in order to perform her duty for her people. Yeah, I heard in the Korean lyrics there things yeah. that Korean people really resonate with. Like you said earlier, like you, you were talking about Nara, the country, yeah. and the Minjok, the people. Yes, you know, exactly. I think that's part of the reason this must be so popular here. Mm. Yep. That is such a theme in Korean history, like losing the country through invasions and things like that. Wow, that was really goosebumps everywhere. Thank Yana you. also from Malaysia says, which Yay, means having come loads, and see the show. Loads and loads of goosebumps. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm. Yana's going to be in Korea hopefully around that time maybe you can win the tickets you said I've always wanted to watch musical here in this country it's on my bucket list thanks mm. Nayong Shi for giving me a taste of it you're oh. so amazing thank uh, you Yana really echoing that all of us here that was fantastic we're going to show some pictures as well on the video radio if you're on board some of the cast photos I think from your last run here in 2016 Keith how would you say the feel is different on this final run well, every time we've done the show here, we try to make it better than the time before. Uh -huh. It's almost like each company learns from the previous experience. So uh, mm. since 2005, the first time we did it, the talent pool here was much more limited. Uh -huh. And uh, a lot of the actors, singers, dancers have been through a lot of other musicals over the years. So this hopefully, I think it's the best company yet. So... Um, these photos it looks like the same show but you it gets deeper each time we do it and there's more emotion more uh vocal power everything seems to go up each time we do it so i can't should... imagine a singer better than niog like yeah. that was <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> absolutely fantastic uh but you also i heard had ok Juhan making her musical debut in the 2005 version a very famous k-pop singer here yes yeah wow is that common as well in the states i wonder because here in korea many musicals draw on k-pop talent right but I'm not sure even in the West End in, in London, it's not such a common thing, it seems. Well, on, on Broadway, it is, uh, uh -huh. or it's becoming more common because of the crossover with uh, American Idol and all of that sort of thing. But uh -huh. uh, when we did Aida on Broadway, it started off with Heather Headley playing Aida, uh -huh. and she won the Tony for it. And after that, then there were other stars came in. Yeah. The, the show made Heather a star, but after that, Tony Braxton played Aida. Wow. Michelle Williams from uh, Destiny's Child was Aida. Goodness. And uh, Deborah Cox, who uh -huh. is a big R&B performer, was the last Aida. So uh, we take advantage of pop stars if they've got the right voice and uh -huh. are able to act yeah. as well. That's got to be important, right? I'm yes. sure many cannot, right? Right. There's sometimes criticism here of certain K-pop stars, maybe good at the singing, but the acting, yeah. Well, that was the big question when we first did it with um, uh, Ok Jun, uh -huh. uh, was uh, I knew again she was a big pop star mm -hmm. but i questioned whether or not she could handle the acting um demands of the role yeah. so she had to come in and audition and i could see there was potential but she didn't have experience okay but she was an incredible uh performer to work with because she didn't have that sort of pop star mentality mm. where she thought she was um she could do it all uh -huh. she really worked hard and studied while she was learning the role and she learned how to act and really 
applied herself, and she emerged as a major musical theater star uh, through that role. Wow. So launched like her second career. I'm sure it helped having an expert like yourself, Keith, at the helm, someone to like learn from as well, right? Is it common for many musicals to do that, to bring in the outside international like directors? Um, Well, uh, Yes, uh, I think that, you know, when you're recreating a show, whether it's Les Mis or any of these big successes on Broadway or the West End, Mm -hmm. uh, we like to pass on the real meaning of the show and rehearse the actors uh, rather than giving it over to a second generation. So uh, with something like Aida, because there's so much meat for actors to work with, uh, I love going to foreign countries to help actors around the world discover it and uh, really sink their teeth into it and uh, elevate the material. That, that's a fantastic mindset to go with, right, to these other countries. Uh, Niall, before we let you go, you now mm. have settled down here in Korea. Yes. Uh, what was the reasoning behind that move? You said you were very Dutch when you were younger. (laughs) Yeah. But because I was so Dutch, I was always very drawn to Korean culture. And I was Uh very curious about what it would be like to live um, and work in Korea. Yeah. Um, And I love Korean food. Okay. What's your favorite dish? (laughs) Oh, goodness. (laughs) (laughs) We're a Korean culture. so Many people are drawn to Korea through its food, I think, Uh, from all over the globe. If you had to pick one to live off of. You as well, Keith, I'm going to ask you. Are you into Korean cuisine? This is oh difficult. yes, I love I love Korean food, this but I can't, couldn't tell you what it is. <laughs> you just sat down at a table. Well, Here, have some of this. Yes, you know, like going for Korean barbecue, I will just eat anything. Yeah, uh-huh. I love kalbuksu. Oh, kalbuksu. Bibimbap. But what I really love the most yeah. is just um, what my mom makes, just yeah. pap, pap with pantan. Lots of different side and, dishes and soup. Yeah, it's very simple, it. but at yeah. the same time, so delicious. It's the best. Uh, I hate to bring this time to an end. It's been great having you in, guys. Thank you once again. So, it's going to be on at the Blue Square venue over in Ite One from That's November right. the 13th, Aida, until February 23rd yes. next year. Mm. Uh, we're giving away a couple of pairs of tickets, so keep your messages coming in. Keith, we're going to take a song request from you from a K-pop group that you are aware of. Uh, well, it's sort of <laughs> difficult. Um, yeah. I, I just I don't follow the K-pop as much, uh, but I'm very aware of it. The yeah. thing that I think is amazing is just that K-pop is so international now that that they're. I mean, the um, BTS is like the biggest group in America now. Yeah, yeah. and it's extraordinary to have <laughs> yeah. seen that happen. Uh, over the last 15 years that I've been working on the show here, that there's Amazing. that crossover. So, yeah. But I don't know their songs, so you would have to choose one. or not. I can I'm, choose one for yes. you. You did say you're a big fan. Yeah. Which one would you like to hear? I, I just want to say, I love you, J-Hope. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening, J-Hope. J-Hope, 사랑해요. And um, can I can I? Yeah, you can introduce this song, absolutely. Okay, it's been on repeat on my Spotify for weeks now. <laughs> it's called Make It Right. And in the intro, there's this, I don't know what kind of instrument it is, but it just sounds so yummy. Uh, You're into this BTS. (laughs) (laughs) I I think what we're going to do is, we're going to keep you actually to the end of the show. We were going to play a song and then do the closing, but if you Mm. don't mind being with us for a few more minutes, that would be fantastic. Yeah, we will play that BTS track. Uh, I think Ed Sheeran was actually involved in writing that. Hence, the beat is so good, isn't it? (laughs) It's amazing. Uh, Just have a listen. It's amazing. can, Can I just ask you, Keith, You've been here then many times, always for work and for the performance for Ida. Uh, to people, many of our listeners have not been to Korea yet. They're dying to come. Would you say that Korea has a certain charm to it? What would you say is, is the best thing about the country? Oh, my God. It's <laughs> very difficult to say. I mean, it's an incredible place. And I think that it's one of those places in the world where uh, when I was younger, I never thought that I would get to Korea because sure. it's so... Um, remote in Mm -hmm. certain ways but uh once you're here 
it's just e extraordinary because it feels very unique and yet it's very international as well. And the combination of the urban lifestyle of Seoul, Seoul is endless, you yeah. know, endless discovery. But then at the same time, I love going up into the mountains mm -hmm. around Seoul mm -hmm. and experiencing the life there. So it's, an, uh, I think, an extraordinary country. Yeah, it's a real juxtaposition with the nature, even in Seoul with the mountains within the capital city. It's quite unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, Will also sent in a late message saying, what a beautiful voice Nayeon has, very strong and powerful. Sounds like she could be soft and sensual at the same time. Soothes the soul. I could listen to her all week long. Thank well, you, Will. get yourself out to Korea to watch the musical yeah, and then you can enjoy oh, it. Canada. Yes. And oh, wow, amazing. Come, come. Yeah. <laughs> That's a plane, surely, that will bring you here. Yeah. Washalalu from the Philippines says that was really awesome. Live performance. What a privilege. And one last question from Will as well to you, Keith, saying, you mentioned Le Mis. Were you fortunate to work with the original London cast, including like Colm Wilkinson? Mm. I love that musical, but I'm looking to find it on vinyl as well. Well, I, I did uh, Les Mis in Toronto, okay. actually, uh, oh, wow. and then Montreal. I did the bilingual version in Montreal. So, Maybe we'll watch one of those, yeah. Yeah, so, um, and then I worked with Colm uh, at that time. He was doing Phantom in Toronto mm -hmm. when I was working on Les Mis. He'd moved on into being the Phantom, and we did a benefit concert of chess Wow. In Toronto. And Colm Wilkinson sang Anthem at the end of this concert, uh -huh. uh, which was a part that he had originated in the early days of chess. Yeah. So uh, that was my connection with Colm. Wow, that's a great story. Yeah. Guys, it really is now time to wrap up. Lots of BTS love as well. Nayong, you're being... Uh, she is ARMY, yes I am. Yeah, labelled with being a big fan. You what? know, I really want BTS to come and see Aida. That would be fantastic. Can I'm we sure just they listen do to a show. shout out? Can we just talk to BTS? BTS, if you're listening. If you're listening, this is the last time that Aida is being performed. And so you don't want to miss this. If you're lucky, they might give you a discount on tickets or oh, something sure. like that. <laughs> J-Hope <laughs> Keith and Nyong it's been a pleasure thank you so much for coming in today uh, we're going to close out now it's been your daily dose of career this is BTS with Make It Right we'll see you again tomorrow same time same place